All right, we welcome the internet today. Matthew 25, we're going to talk about the sheep and goats in Matthew 25 and try to get a little understanding here about Gentiles in the scripture. Uh, if you look at Peter in Acts chapter 2, he is not going to Gentiles, he's going to the house of Israel. He is giving the repentant message of killing their Messiah which Jesus asked the Father for, to forgive them for doing that. And so Peter's preaching that, a repent and be baptized message. And it's called the gospel of circumcision. It is not the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom was while the king was at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven at hand, the, the good news. But while Peter's in his ministry of Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, on, on, like in that, he's preaching the gospel of circumcision. What's the good news of the circumcision? They can repent. They can be baptized. They can get remission of sins. They can get receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's Acts 2.38, just plain day. Paul has the gospel of the uncircumcision. What's the good news of the uncircumcision? Christ died for their sins according to Scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day. If you trust it, you're sealed, saved, and secure. That's the difference in the message. <coughs> Peter does not want to go to a Gentile up to Acts 10, then he is shown that he can go because this man is in the covenant. Covenant of blessing. He fears God and works uh, righteousness and is working righteous alms. He gives alms and things like into that. That's helping Israel. And this type of thing shows up in the tribulation. It is based on the fact of helping or taking hold of the skirt of Jew and helping them, which is in Zechariah. Paul's message is without working righteousness. It has nothing to do with blessing Israel. They fear God. The first believers fear God because they see the signs and wonders, because Paul, and it, up to Acts 15, Peter's going to Jews. Jews require a sign. So you've got tongues, signs, miracles going on. All the things that they're preaching about is prophecy. It's recorded in the Old Testament. But Paul comes to a point in the Corinthian letter and warns him. He said, you might as well get ready. There's a day coming when tongues will cease and prophecy shall fail. Now, no good prophecy will fail. What's he talking about prophecy failed? I cannot apply prophecy to you. And the people that first trusted Christ, if they were still alive, would have to have charity for you. And you'd have charity for them. It's back this way and that way. Now, all of that said, when Peter went to Cornelius, Paul was not even separated in his ministry in Acts 13. Peter and Bar Paul and Barnabas went on a ministry in Jerusalem. And if you read the book of Acts from 9 on, catch the word again. Every time Paul says, I went up to Jerusalem again, that means he went there before. But if you find a verse that said, I went to Jerusalem, that's the first time. And you, can, you start studying your Bible that way in Acts 9 through probably 15. Galatians 2 is in the reference to about Acts 14 or 15. Barnabas is still with him, so it has to be around 14 before he left. Galatians 2, I took Barnabas with me. So you can study. I'm just giving you reference. This is not what I'm preaching, but you can look these things up and begin to study the book of Acts and what's happening in the time of time frame of it. But what I want to understand is there are Gentiles in the Scripture that have prophecy. Matter of fact, hold on to Matthew 25, get Isaiah 49, and get uh, Luke 2. I mean, we're not the only Gentiles in the Bible that got something. But there's one thing you can understand. If Cornelius didn't even know the Lord was listening to him or not, he just did it out of fear. Obviously, the, the revelation wasn't given to him of Peter yet, of the covenant. And if Peter didn't want to go there, then he don't understand Genesis 12 yet. That's what you got to know. Uh, can a prophet write it down and not understand it? Can a, a preacher read it and not understand it? How does that have to be revealed? By the Spirit. 
by God, the Spirit of God, right? So if Peter has a vision on a rooftop, and he visions that sheep down, got all kinds of animals. He don't eat them animals, folks. He ain't like us. I mean, he don't eat bacon, he don't eat ham, he don't eat catfish, he don't eat those things. They're unclean to him. And he is a law-abiding traditionalist, I guess you could say, yet he's a law-abiding. And he doesn't, so when this sheep comes down and the Lord said, rise, kill, and eat, it's like, no. No. It'd be like you, somebody tells you, go over there and bow down to Buddha. You ain't going to do that. You know better. Well, he knows better. He said, no, I, I've never, ne never eat or touched or anything common or unclean. The Lord said, don't call that what I've cleansed common or unclean. He does it three times with him. Well, you think that's it, the issue. And no, after that's over, he's still sitting there going, what did that mean? And here comes some men. They said, come over to this man's house. I ain't supposed to go to that man's house. And says so. It's an unlawful thing for a man that's a Jew to keep company or come under one of another nation. He gets over there and they tell him, this Cornelius is a just man, man. He fears God and does alms. He works right. I mean, this is a good man towards us. And so finally Peter says, I perceive. I perceive. I see something here. I perceive that God is no respecter of person. But in every nation, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. You'll never find that in Ephesians 1, 6. You're accepted in the beloved, not in your works. And so he, he doesn't even understand, even though the vision's been given to him, all that, he's willing to go because he, God has told him, go, but he don't understand it until he gets there and then a perception comes. I see, well, this man isn't as bad as I, you know, there was a man, I think Brother Moore was telling me about one time in the Navy, that was a Jew that joined the Navy, and he had never eaten anything like the Navy serves. <laughs> and the first time he ate ham, he threw up. He never eat ham. And he thought, it wasn't the ham that made him sick, it was the thought of it. See? Sometimes we get sick for eating things. I was preaching a Bible class in... Uh, Mount Ida one time, and this kid was sitting, I remember, he was sitting right there. And gritting his teeth and angry with me because he didn't eat unclean things. He wasn't a Jew, but he just didn't know that. So we had a wedding, and I was called to do the wedding, and that was his daddy that was getting married again. And they served dinner there. And the white meat he thought was chicken was pork. <laughs> and he was a scarfing it up. Boy, I mean, he's getting on with the program, had a good smile on his face. And my, the, his daddy, my friend, said, how you like that? And he said, oh, it's good. He said, yeah, that's pork. <laughs> Started trying to make himself sick, so he'd throw it up. Now, that's how serious some people are about things. Orthodox, Reform, and Conservative Jews all have different thoughts of things, but there's some people won't eat nothing like that. You understand? They're they're Orthodox on this. So Peter said, "I never did that, but now I perceive this guy's all right. This guy's helped us a lot." And then the covenant comes in. That's the covenant knowledge. Well, Paul and Barnabas still aren't separated. Their ministry. It's still Saul of Tarsus in Acts 12. But they went up to Jerusalem and delivered a bounty given by the Gentiles who fear God and work righteousness. They're not told to sell out. Supply bounty. You know what they're called in the scripture? You know what they're called? Christians. Not today's Christians. They're called Christians at Antioch. Why? They gave as much as their ability could for the church at Judea. Now, with all that given, somewhere down the line, them Gentiles giving all that money, somebody's got to take care of this. That's what bishops were for. Bishop oversaw the money. 
Bishops are not a call profession in Ephesians chapter 4. It's a desired office. They're always elders, and they're capable of not letting their marriage or anything else get involved in the monetary state. They're honest, and they hold the money because those church, that church at Judea have actually done what God told them. They've sold out, and by selling out, is God going to let them starve? I mean, come on, once you sell out, what do you got left? That's like the end of the day. When I'm wore out, I'm wore out. How about you, Harold? I'm ready to hit the chair and watch TV and go to sleep immediately. TV is a... Then I got to wake up and go to bed. Uh, When you're out, you're out, right? Greg, if you shoot all the bullets in your gun, are you out? So, you ain't got no more bullets, so how do you reload? You don't. That's what they figured out in America. Get rid of the bullets. They don't care how many guns you got. Get rid of the bullets. Can't reload that way. Now, so Paul's ministry from Acts 13 on is a message of forgiveness. He preaches that in Acts 13, 38, and 39. And the Jews are upset with him because he said, By this man you're justified from all things which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. And even the Gentiles get mad today. Oh no, there's an unpardonable sin. No, there ain't. Not in Paul's message. There's no unpardonable sin in Paul's message. You're either forgiven of all or you ain't forgiven of any. And that's what you have to trust. God saved you. Gave you and sealed you. And that seal is going to come in real handy someday. Because I'm afraid I have Alzheimer's in my family. And if I get it, I'm sealed. If you were challenged today, if somebody took your child, Bonnie or Molly or one of your children, came in your house and said, deny the Lord or we're going to skin them. What you got to do? You ain't got a gun. You're going to say, well, I'm saved by grace. I'll just, it'll be okay to deny it. I'll be all right. Just, I mean, I'm sealed. That's why our doctrine cannot be with Peter. We can't be faced with that, folks. You can't lose your salvation. So why would he put you in a process of denying him with something like that? So he might just catch you up. Leave. Hasta la vista, baby. Gone. Whatever else. The message of Paul and Peter is so different. I mean, they got to die for what they believe. That means deny. Matthew says denying mother, father, sister, home, forsaken homes, everything. They got to do that. You don't. Right? Isn't that great? Isaiah 49, 5. And now, saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my Lord, uh, my God, shall be my strength. And he said, It's a like thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to who? Then Jesus is going to be a light to some Gentiles somewhere. They don't know anything about the body. Isaiah is not prophesying about the body. And Paul gathers this verse after his separation in Acts 13 and does not quote it exact, but he is the apostle what? Of the Gentiles, not to. Of the Gentiles. That means he part of them with them. Uh, Acts 26, he said, uh, Delivering me from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes. Was your eyes open in church when you never knew Paul? Did you know anything? To open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light. You were blinded. Turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan. What's the power of Satan? Death. Death. It's 
scared of it all your life. From the power of Satan unto God that you may receive what? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is there. You can receive it. It's yours. So this quote is about Jesus Christ. Is he a light to the Gentiles? Yes. Turn to Luke. Chapter 2. See, people try to mix this up, mess this up. You better not, you better leave it alone who it's talking to and who it's talking about. Luke don't know nothing about the body of Christ when he's writing this. Acts don't know anything about the body of Christ until Paul comes along. Nobody knows anything about the body of Christ until Paul comes. Why? He is the one that got the revelation. Did Paul know the words of Jesus Christ of John 17? No. Did he qualify from the baptism of John to the ascension of the Lord? No. Is he the 13th apostle? No. no. What is the apostle of? Gentiles. Peter didn't reach out and shake his hand in Galatians 2 and said, I'm sending you out to the uncircumcision. No, he agreed. Your gospel is the gospel of the uncircumcision. You'd think he's preaching grab a hold of that, wouldn't you? They don't see it. If they see it, God, and they don't do it, God, and woe unto them. For not preaching it. Oh my goodness. Come. It'd be, it'd be a bad day. i say it that way. All right, Luke 2, 25. There, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, or Simon. The same man was just, devout, fearing, uh, waiting for the constellation of Israel. And we we'll, might look at that constellation in just a minute. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Here's a guy that's got the Holy Ghost basically before some other people. Did you ever think about that? Why does he need the Holy Ghost here? Let's read. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. Why did Paul need the Holy Ghost? Uh, out of what? The Scriptures. Was Paul an educated man in the Scriptures? I'm not talking about his, his writings. Those aren't written yet. Is he educated in the Scriptures? He's a Pharisee, a lawyer. Uh, he told Timothy, he said, uh, Lois and Eunice have given you Scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. Let me explain to you, Timothy, and you'll see what the Scriptures were saying. Are you with The day you were born, the Gospel was already there. Had to be revealed to you. How shall they call on him in whom they not believe? And how shall they believe in him without, uh, without hearing? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except to be sent? Steve Abbott would ask me one time, he said, Why do you want to go to Selma? I said, I guess because I want to, and I guess God will send me if I go. He said, Okay. <laughs> Been here, what, 28 years, 9? I don't know, been here a long time. Why? Because it's sent. And we've all grown up together. Some of us growed up, some of us growed out, some of us just growed. <laughs> I was looking at a picture of us back when I got here. I had brown hair when I got here. I was young. I actually was pretty young then. I ain't now. Uh... But, I mean, you change. Uh, I remember all of you. I remember you had kids, young kids, and everything else. And we've grown together. Now we're all on our own. Nobody loves us anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Now watch. He said, it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen who? So, I mean, he's in the temple. He's waiting. I have no idea. He may do that all the time. But he's waiting. And one day, and maybe he doesn't. You see, can the Lord move you? Yeah. Isn't it amazing? You ever had a situation where you knew the Lord moved you to do that? Or it was there? It's like, wow. And when he gets you there where he wants you, then he's going to show you something. And so he's in there, and he's waiting for the consolation of Israel, which... It's, consolation is a calling on a, alongside of someone to help them, okay? 
he'd been waiting, and so here it comes. And <clears throat> verse 27. And he came by the Spirit into what? Why did he go to the temple? Because that's where he's led. Why didn't he go over to the marketplace? Yeah, why didn't he go to the drugstore? Why didn't he go to the uh, manger? I mean, wise men didn't go to the manger. Who went to the manger? The shepherds. Each person gets led to a different place, right? The wise men didn't even come for two years almost. The shepherds came to the manger. Was that where the Lord was born? They came to see it because it's led by a star, okay? Here's a man, maybe he's walking along in the streets of Jerusalem, and the Spirit says, let's go, and they go to the temple. Why? Why is he going to the temple on that day? But what's the day that it's a good day to lead him? I'm going to get something over to you if I don't, if, if I don't fall down dead. I'm going to get something over you. Why did they? Why did the Spirit lead him to the temple that day? To do what? What was his mother and Joseph going to do? Circumcise him. Made of a woman, made under the law. Does God know? God says, go over there and wait. So, got the next verse. And, and by the way, did the Lord know where Saul was on the road to Damascus? Does he know where you're at? Did he know where to put you the day you needed salvation? Did he know where to put the preacher in front of you? Did he know what he wanted that preacher to preach? See, I hear these preachers say, I've got to get a message together. No, you don't. The message already written. Pray to the Lord, read and study, and it'll come out. Boy, it'll just come out. My problem with reading is I can't read without jumping here and to and fro because of the verses are swinging to me, and I want to write them down because I can do an outline, man. <laughs> Don't do any good. I can do an outline. God says, you're a really good outline, fellow, but I'm not using that today. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So, did, uh, I mean, <clears throat> did Paul try to go to, I think it's three different times to different places, and the Lord wouldn't let him. Was there reasonings? Yes. Okay, now watch. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light, listen, to lighten who? Gentiles. And the glory of thy people Israel. So, again, Gentiles going to have light? Okay? Yet you got Jesus at 30 years old, tells the apostles to go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of Samaritan city, you not. Matthew 15, he said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He won't speak to a, a mixed marriage woman. Right? So what's the light to the Gentiles then? The woman said, could you heal my daughter? Wouldn't speak a word to her. The disciples wouldn't speak a word to him. Her. And he said, I'm not on, I'm just sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yea, Lord. Then he tells them, he said, it's not fit to cast the bread, the children's bread, to the Gentiles. I, I don't want to get that. Matthew, hold on. I got that. I want to make sure I said this right. Uh, children's bread to the dogs. I apologize. I'm thinking Gentiles. Uh, Matthew 15, 26. He answered and said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. What, what bread? Where do you see bread mentioned by the Lord? The Word of God. He is the bread. He is the Word. What did he break? Bread. This is my body. Remember? There's all kinds of reference to the bread, correct? Was he the bread of life? 
Okay, now watch. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Where did she put herself? Willingly. Dog. Absolutely. Below the table, getting the scraps. Are you with me? Acts 10. Israel's been dealt with for many chapters. Two, three, four, five, six. Paul isn't even have appearing till Acts 9. Acts 7, Stephen preaches to Israel. Said, you stiff-necked, uncircumcised, hardened ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Not blaspheme, resist the Holy Ghost. It's offering you something and you resist it. If they'd accepted it, then they had the chance of blasphemy. But no, no. They blaspheme against the Son of Man. They do not receive. They're against the Holy Ghost. What shows up in Acts 8? A eunuch. What's a eunuch not allowed in the Old Testament? He can't come in the holy place. Man lost his stones, not allowed. Okay? What shows up in Acts 9? Saul, a blasphemous little, pestilent little person who is fearful. What showed up in Acts 10? It sounds to me like the crumbs are being dropped. Am I missing you? The nation of Israel, their last offer looks about Acts 7 because Stephen, they stoned him to death over it. And he prayed for them for forgiveness. What's in the law? Thou shalt not. Could there be somebody coming along a little later? Where they're justified from all things which they could not be justified by the law of Moses. And it looks to me like some of the dogs are getting the crumbs. Right? And in Acts 12, because Peter opened the doors to the Gentiles, Jesus being a light to the Gentiles, with the message of the resurrected Savior, Son of God, are getting hungry. But the Gentiles that hear that message have got money. They have an ability. And if you read Acts, they gave as much as their ability could. And the money was gathered together. And there's Saul and Barnabas delivering it to Jerusalem. You with me? And in delivering it to Jerusalem, God's not letting the people that sold out starve. They continue to get support. When that church dies out, will there be any support needed after that? Then there's no need of bishops any longer. Bishops are not a given. It's a, it's a desired office of an elder. I had a man get mad at me over I should I couldn't be a bishop because I was married before I was divorced. That's not what that verse says. I'm the husband of one wife right now. I don't need any more. <clears throat> you understand they had multi-wives back in. A bishop was a husband of one wife. That doesn't have anything to do with divorce. He just had one wife. Maybe the others died. Maybe he never married before. Maybe he just had that one wife. But one wife, it says nothing about divorce. A man was mad at me because I was divorced. That ain't what the verse says. And I ain't a bishop. A bishop is an elder that oversaw the money. And the elders at Ephesus were called bishops. And they oversaw the money for the saints in Judea. Am, am I doing something wrong? Or are you just sitting there? It all means what it says, but everybody wants to make it say something else. Everybody wants to be a bishop. They want to be this. They want to be that. You ain't. Women want to be preachers. You ain't. People want to be this. They want to be that. Well, you ain't. It's what God says. Is what you is. Okay? So, 
in Matthew, the dogs. So let's go back to Acts, uh, Luke 2 again. Luke 2. Did the man get led to the temple? Yes. Was there going to be a great meeting there? Yes. In walks Joseph, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Jesus the baby. They're bringing him in here because they're just. Joseph is a just and devout man, and God knew that when he chose Mary, a spouse to Joseph, that he would be a just man, would follow the law. If a male child was born, he would circumcise him. That's fulfilling righteousness. Everybody okay so far? They bring him in. The child is circumcised. Simon picks the baby up. And that's what he says. Let's watch. <clears throat> now I want you to read this with me. Real close. Verse 28. He took, then took he up in his arm, blessed God, and said, Now, uh, Lord, now lettest thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou has prepared when? Okay. Has prepared before all people. How did he do that? Isaiah 7, what would be, what would conceive a virgin? Has John the Baptist identified him? Was it known by the shepherds? Was it known by the wise men? Was it known by certain people? Yeah. What was Simon waiting on? That's, he's waiting for this all to happen, okay? So there are people that did know, right? Okay, now let's read on. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentile and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Wow. I always thought about this situation with Joseph. Well, that's got to be a hard thing. Your wife just had a baby. You've never known her. And you've got to trust God that that is a holy thing. I doubt there's a man in here that would be that just. I mean, come on. We're humans. But Joseph was helped. He was told, don't you worry about this. You know, if an angel came in your house and told you about some things, you'd probably believe it, reckon. The other night at Bible class, a house, two boys sitting there, and I said, boys, I want you to ask you something here. And this is serious. Say, so God comes down in a room in front of us tonight, and he says, and I'm not going to say their names. The older one, I said, God says, what would you give me to go to heaven? And he looked at me like, mm -hmm. I said, what, would you try to give him money? God don't need your money. Would you give him your car, your, your truck? You, got a, you just got a, a new used truck. Would you give him that to go to heaven? God don't need your truck. He don't want anything smelly or burning fluid, fuel, oil. Somebody said one time, I hope Harleys are up there. I said, God wouldn't let Harleys in heaven. Smoking and belching, puking oil out on the floor. God, clean that mess up. <laughs> well, you can't give him your truck that's your prized possession right now I can't give him that, that no nah, I don't need your truck would you give him a suit coating no nah, he, he don't need that I don't give him a house you know give him a house I don't need your house what would you give him oh, I don't guess I got anything so I asked the other brother oh, he, he dead in the water I mean it's like a, I don't know man so I asked the mother, and she's going, mm -hmm. so I asked the daddy, and he said, I ain't got a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. How about faith? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. If God said, what do you give me to go to heaven? Well, I trust your faith. 
He said, you're coming. I said, okay. Now God said, you're coming. He ain't going to back off. He don't lie. Now what can you give him? And they looked at me. Well, what do you mean? I said, now what do you give him? <laughs> and it's like, mm. I said, the verse is clear. Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. That's all God asked from you. Just present your body to him. Paul said, Lord, what do you have me do? You want me to go to who? I get you scared of them. You want me to go to who? I hate them. <laughs> yeah, well, if you don't go to them, you missed why I saved you. Are you listening, folks? You missed why I saved you. Woe unto the preachers that preach not the gospel. God saved me for one reason, not to build a church. If he did, we're a failure right here. Preach the gospel of Christ. Why? I have to believe that it's the power of God unto salvation. I need not teach you. You can't teach lost people. If you're saved, I can teach you. But the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. It'd be worthless to preach any Sunday morning that I don't mention that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to Scripture. Paige was glad about that one night, wasn't you? Well, I'm telling you, it's the power of God. It's so simple. It's the power of God, buddy. He can enter it. If the Spirit can move Simon to talk and go, the gospel can move you. And you know what's wrong with people? They're ashamed of it. I said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. They're ashamed of it. There are things that make them, well, I don't want to tell people that. That's just going to cause hard feelings and everything else. <laughs> well, let them go to hell. Is that what you want to do? The service and the ministry of the body of Christ, everybody has a different ministry. But you better get on with whatever your ministry is. And if you don't know what it is, you better find out. You better find out what your ministry is and do it. And do it cheerfully. Willingly. Folks, it breaks my heart some days here in Selma when I come in here and they've got three or four people. It breaks my heart. Does that make me mad at people? No, it breaks my heart. Because the fellowship. It breaks my heart when people don't want to have fellowship, when they don't want to study, they don't want to lay their book open and read, because you ain't getting it at home on the TV. You ain't getting it on the radio. You're not getting it out there in the world. There ain't nobody coming up to you and talking to you about the grace of God and the dispensation of grace. You have to come here or go to a conference. Well, I set that conference up in Arkansas to, to make it where we all come together and have fellowship and have a good time together and study. And fellowship together. Maybe drink a little moonshine. No. <laughs> Folks, I don't care about the stuff that religion. I hate religion. I don't hate people. I hate religion. Well, this man, Simon, is led to the temple. Do you realize what he picked up? The Son of God. Do you realize what you picked up this morning to come to church? The Word of God. Do you realize what's in there? Your knowledge. And God is giving you His Word. And He can't lie. They listened to him and they were overwhelmed. Like Marvel going, wow. You know, <clears throat> sometimes you're given something in life and you really don't know how great it really is until you meditate on it. Philippians tells us to meditate on these things. We never realize that somewhere down the road it's going to mean a whole lot to me. My daddy told me, he said one time, if it ain't got fire and gas, it won't run. And he's right. 
I just don't know how to get to the fire and gas anymore. Computers do it. But it's still fire and gas, folks. That combustion chamber is not going to blow up until there's fire and gas in there. Now, Mike got a little different situation. His don't work unless it's compressed. Diesels are compressed. They don't fire. They're compressed, and they blow up. That's why they're so good in boats and everything. They're not nearly as flammable as gasoline. But my daddy said something else. He said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You don't need fixing. I always think about David's men when they were walking along there, brought the Ark of the Covenant out of the Philistines, and it kind of shook on the cart, and so reached out there and tried to straighten it out. Boom! Dead as a hammer. <laughs> scared David. I mean, what do you got to do to scare David? I mean, David ain't scared. I mean, he's a, a, he's a warrior. God didn't even bother him, man. I said, give me a, a see. What rock would be good for that heathen, that dog? Oh, I'll get that rock right there. And then I'll get the rest of them for his brothers later on. And he put that thing in there, and he just gave her a toss. And, Hang on, buddy. Pow! Hit him right probably between the eyes and knocked him dead. Then probably went over and took his sword and cut his head off. Now, that does a terrible thing to an army, doesn't it? If you're standing there with your champion's head in your hand, they got to wonder, that little guy's that bad? What's that army like? You understand what I'm saying? When Egypt, when Israel left Egypt, you know why the mixed multitude, Gentiles, went out? Why'd they go out? They feared God. They saw it. And they thought, if he did that while they're here, what's he going to do to us when they leave? Did I miss you? What's he going to do to them, you know, when we leave? Motivate yourself with that. Do you say, I love that person. How many times you give them the gospel or how many times you talk to them about the gospel? Or did you just get afraid because you were afraid you'd upset the apple cot and not make, have any friends left? Well, where did God ever say you had to have friends except him? There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But, I mean, think about it. You leave here. Say, oh, it's the rapture today. Heck with my brother and sister. Heck with the people I work with. Heck with the people I like. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. That's not charitable. We get busy judging. We're so busy, angry at people. We're, no charity involved. Have trouble with our brethren. Be kind, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Preferring one another over everybody else. Who's your best friend? Mine's the Lord. Who's my next best friend? My wife. My wife gave me my children. The Lord saved my children. Why did He save them? Because the power of God and the will of God was the gospel of Christ. It took Susie a long time. She's stubborn. Robert got saved in a Strange way on a highway. Mary Beth did too. But they're saved. Craig calls me up and wakes me up at night. I'm saved, Brother Jerry. Good. I'm going back to sleep now, John Craig. Mark says, I get it. I don't look at them and see their failures or see their successes. I look at them as my brethren. I don't know if they look, how they look at me. Probably, oh, they're a dad-in-law. <laughs> I look at Leon. I've known him since he's a boy. He's willing to come and help me when I can. I look at Harold. My, I mean, Harold, I love Harold to death. George, my God. I, I respect this boy more than you ever thought when he come back. 
willing to admit he was wrong. That takes guts, man. Mrs. Bearden back there. Known her for 100 years. Very faithful woman. I look at Mrs. Swindle. I look at her and think of her and her husband. How did Mr. Swindle come back? Got saved. I took guts too. I look at my children. I want them to be saved. My grandchildren. I want them to be saved. I look at all of you in here. Your brethren. I want you to be saved and secure and sealed. And I want you to hear the word of God. And I want you to wait patiently. Because when God takes us out, it is not going to be nice. It's going to be horrible. The world has no idea how bad it can get. Until the rod of anger comes on the earth. In the middle of the tribulation, woe unto the inhabitants of earth, for he has come. Satan comes literally to the earth to wreak all kinds of havoc. And your God saved you from it. But not only did he save you, he sealed you and secured you where nothing can separate you from it. And you don't have to worry about being sheep and goats, which I didn't get to today, but we will. Lord willing, you're not sheep and goats, and you're not working righteous Gentiles. You are the body of Christ, members in particular, having a ministry that you ought to be doing, and doing it with joy and rejoicing, and be glad that God Almighty knows you, helps you, lets you call on Him as Father, lets His Spirit make intercession for you, and do exceedingly above all that you ask or think. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you.